Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the fish room. In today's video, I wanna show you everything that I dose and feed to my 300 gallon reef tank. Now we're gonna go through everything that you see here on the table as well as the calcium reactor. And we're gonna talk about how often, how much, and why for everything that you see. So with that said, let's go and get started with the food. Uh, for obvious choices here, we have the nori, pretty basic organic nori. I pick it up from Amazon. It's like 10 bucks for 50 sheets. I do a half a sheet twice a day, one in the morning, one in the evening, depending on when I'm uh, testing my nitrates and phosphates for that day. And uh, yeah, pretty good obvious choice for the tangs, cuts down on the uh, aggression as well as it helps supplement some phosphates. Now, moving on to my fish food. This is homemade fish food. You guys, if you've been here for a while, you know that I've been making this stuff for several years. Now, if you're watching a live stream from like three years ago, opposed to today or most recent one, my um, recipe has changed and it does change pretty often depending on kind of what the tank needs. And what I mean by that is, for example, if I have low phosphates for whatever reason, I will increase the amount of greens using broccoli or spinach. Uh, I usually prefer broccoli, it's got more nutrients. And um, I like to put a lot more of that in there, say if my phosphates are low, and that just kind of helps bump it up more naturally than kind of having to dose it all the time. So with that, uh, this particular batch has shrimp, octopus, squid, and of course uh, the, uh, the, um, the broccoli that I was talking about. Now, I have also added my Acrovitro fuel as coral supplement slash food and my acro power both of those are in my food not a ton of it i don't really have i just kind of dump it in because it looks you know it looks like a good amount i don't really measure it out and um when i make this stuff i do it every like three to four months and i make seven to ten packages of, the, of this and it's pretty simple you come in break off put it in the tank it kind of floats around the fish take care of it and then it kind of disperses through the tank and also feeds the coral at the same time so it really works out uh, feeding wise now Moving on um, to the calc washer. As I mentioned before, my calcium reactor is my main source of calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium for the tank. Now, I do supplement magnesium every once in a while for whatever reason, if it's just not keeping up. And um, I use calc washer in my um, Avast Marine K2 calc stirrer. Now, I am dosing about 7,000 milliliters of this stuff uh, per day, and that does adjust depending on kind of uh, where my media level is within my calcium reactor, if I need to top it off um, and I haven't got around to doing it, I will bump up a little bit more to kind of help take care of it. And also where my phosphates are, because you guys know that the, the calc washer will precipitate some of the phosphates out of the tank. If I start bottoming out phosphates and it becomes a problem, I will cut down on how much I dose of calc washer and just crank up the calcium reactor to compensate. But either way, calc washer is always nice. I like it, pH benefits, and it's I'm a gear junkie, so having another additional piece of equipment is always something that I enjoy. So. On top of that, there is that backup source if the calcium reactor was to die for whatever reason or something to happen, I have the backup source of the calc washer, which will at least uh, keep the tank going and keep it alive through the um, apex dose pump, and it will uh, help kind of prolong the death, if that makes sense. It gives me time to fix the calcium reactor or to get another, like, maybe two-part or something over there to help out. Now, moving on to my main source of dosing when it comes to corals. We're talking about uh, acro... acro Aquavitro, I call it Aquavitro, but it's Aquavitro fuel. I've been using this stuff for several years. I used to use Reef Plus. The reason why I switched is I was looking for the carbohydrates and the amount of um, elements on the back or minerals and all that stuff. It, uh, it, this was a little bit better than what I was looking for when it came to ICP tests and just kind of balancing out my tank. And I've seen several reefers be very successful with this, especially high-end stick tanks. This stuff is really great. It's not the cheapest, but I do get it locally here at that fish place in Lancaster. I think it's like it used to be like 26 bucks now it's like 35 uh thank you inflation and uh that stuff i dose uh 200 milliliters once a week on sunday and just keep in mind i do all my dosing on sundays it's just get it done over with it's on the calendar for the apex and it's good to go so that's good stuff really like it let's go to move on to the eco balance now i've been using this stuff for several years uh, again uh, a reefer of mine kind of recommended it i used to have some dyno issues started doing this as well as you know the usual dyno treatments it's really helped um, I like it. It's Again, this is not the cheapest stuff, but I've been very successful with it, and I do notice a difference in the tank um, just when I'm not dosing it. it. just The tank just seems a little off. It could just be in my head. I, I'm willing to admit that, but I do feel better dosing this stuff. Do you need it? Probably not, but I like it, and I've just been using it, and it seems to really help out. But like I said, I've grown the 300 out twice now while we're working on the second time. And you guys knew the very first time when I was using all this stuff, I grew it out wall to wall with corals um, within two years. So it, it, this stuff works, it just does. So uh, moving on to my next thing here, uh, potassium. 
Uh, I like to use, uh, I used to make my own. I, I just, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm not in the mood of that. I like to make my nitrates and phosphates. This stuff just was a pain in the butt. So uh, phosphate solution from uh, Brightwell Aquatics. I dose uh, 35 milliliters of this once a week, again on Sunday. Now that dosing amount does change depending on what the ICP test comes back at. So I'm sending out another one next week and uh, that could change. It might go up, it might go down. Again, that will depend and I double check that every three months. Uh, moving on to the next thing, strontium here. Uh, the reason why I dose this is because it was low on an ICP test a few months ago and I dose 100 milliliters, or sorry, 50 milliliters once a week on Sunday. Um, and uh, again, that might change depending on the ICP test. Moving on to Acro Power. Uh, one of my favorite supplements, I like to call my sugar water. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, there's mixed reviews about it, but I like this stuff. There is a noticeable difference when I've dosed it and not dosed it over the years when I wasn't able to get it for a while. And uh, yes, works out. I do 200 milliliters twice, or sorry, once a week. And of course, it is in my food as well as the fuel. So good stuff. Really like that. The corals definitely show more polyp extension, and I get, I get great growth in the reef tank. Moving on to the next thing here, we have Acro Vitro Seed. Now this is a beneficial bacteria and um, it's just something that I've been using since I started the 300 gallon reef. And again, I started using it because the same guy that used the fuel used this and he had a beautiful reef tank and I was like, hey, you know, I, wanna, I want that too. So I uh, started dosing it. I do 35 milliliters uh, once a week and this is a one gallon jug. So you can imagine that lasts me a long time. I do have to get some more, get a little low. and. Um, that stuff works out pretty good. It adds beneficial bacteria, helps process the waste, especially when you have a lot of fish in your tank, and uh, it works out really well. Uh, moving on to the last thing here, and again, this is dependent on the ICP test. A few months back, I had an ICP test said that the fluorine was a little low, so I'm dosing 10, I did the recommended dose to bring it back, and I dose 10 milliliters of that stuff every week. Of course, that might change depending on the next ICP test results. Now. When it comes to the main stuff, if we're just gonna take away the things that I don't usually dose unless the ICP test tells me, um, this is pretty much it. So we got our uh, fuel, our calcoser, our food of course, EcoBalance, nitrates and phosphates, um, AcroPower and seed. Those are my main things. These are the extras, depending on kind of where the ICP test is at and where I'm at when it comes to uh, um, just overall how the tank is doing regarding that test. Now, uh, nitrates and phosphates, when it comes to nitrates, I do have an auto doser. I have a one gallon jug over there and I dose, uh, right now it's currently 40 milliliters a day and that changes uh, not in a weekly, probably every couple weeks depending on kind of where the tank is sitting at. I like to stay at about 10 to 15 ppm of nitrates, which if you've watched some of my videos from a few years ago, you may be, I used to say three to five ppm. I feel and do much better with my corals growth coloration wise if I'm up around 10, just my particular setup. It's in my particular system, that works out really well for me. So that's where I like to stay at. And again, uh, auto dose, 40 milliliters a day. And then of course I have nitrates in my food and um, I just kind of go from there and kind of see where I'm at. Either I feed more or I dose more just to get them where I want them to be. Now when it comes to phosphates, I do not auto dose that stuff. I find that when I was auto dosing, it was too finicky. It wasn't as consistent as I wanted it, even if it was an auto dose, because you know maybe I fed them a little bit extra nori that day. Maybe they had a little bit extra broccoli or nori what that was in the food. So it, was, it just kind of bounced around too much. So I just uh, dose it by hand as needed. And um, don't make the mistake of just dumping the bottle in because you think you're, you're dosing the right amount. Just start slow. Um, this can be pretty potent, especially the stuff that I make here is very, very potent and you don't need that much. Now, um, if you are interested in that, by the way, you can check out the website, fisheffects.com. I'm gonna throw my little plug in there. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for dosing. Outside of that, the, the calcium reactor, um, it does its thing. I, I change up, I add the media as needed and it just does its thing. Of course, have an extra CO2 tank. We talked about that in the previous video. Um, that's it. That's what I dose, and I've been successful with it. Nothing has really changed over the years because once you find something that works, I usually stick with it. Now, when it comes to anything like um, like that removes nitrates or phosphates or anything crazy like that, I don't I don't advocate adding any of that. I don't add any pH buffers. I just simply use my CO2 uh, scrubber uh, to increase the pH, and um, I just make sure that the you know this aeration through power heads and all that stuff. So I don't I don't add anything to the tank extra. I don't do anything to lower nitrates and phosphates. I don't believe in any chemicals. I don't use GFO. I do use carbon uh, once or twice a month kind of around water changes depending on kind of how the tank is doing. And um, yeah, that's it. So if you guys have any questions or if you dose anything different that you've had success with, feel free to put that stuff in the comment section. I'm interested. So uh, let me know and I'll see you guys later. Appreciate you. Bye.